This show is brought to you by the This Old Nerd store, powered by Amazon.com. Visit store.thisoldnerd.com. Find everything we've talked about and so much more at the store. Plus, since it's powered by Amazon, it's safe and secure. Buy from the This Old Nerd store, you get tech, we get a commission. It's win-win. Okay, we're back. Welcome back to This Old Nerd. This is the show where we attempt to have the most tech-forward house there is and the most tech-forward life. Last time we were here, ran into some problems. Oh, by the way, I am this old nerd, I'm Ayaz Akhtar. Last time, we tried to free ourselves from cable television, and we had a lot of problems. So what, what do you possibly do? Do you just lay down and die and it's all over? No. Clearly, this is part two of cutting cable TV. But this time, it works. And why does it work? Thanks to you guys. You guys were leaving comments and suggestions. Then we got some help from our friends at hotharbor.com. Marco Cipetta would send me this awesome email explaining to me how I can make everything work better. Then I asked my friends over at the HD TV podcast, awesome podcast by the way, what I could do. They suggested something else. And guess what? Everything actually is working now. So now we're actually going to show you how to hook up everything. Plus, we have some friends over at Elgato. They sent us a tuner for our Mac so we can actually see if the tuners made a difference or whatever. So this time, it's going to be different. Now last time we were at my desk of fun here, we were hooking up this antenna cable to this antenna cable. So we have two coax cables and they were going into our amplifier. So this is going all the way to the attic, which is a very long run cable. Hey, genius, do you even watch your own show? The longer a coax cable is, the weaker the signal. It actually loses strength as the cable gets longer. So if you can have a short cable, as short as it can be, make that. A long run of cable is going to diminish the signal. So why was the amplifier down here? Well, we had electric down here, but we didn't have electric in the attic a long time ago. When I originally set this up, there was no electric up there, but now there is. So, thanks to Marco, he said, why don't you just move the amplifier to the attic? And guess what? It made a huge difference. All right, so we're back in our attic, and we have a modified setup this time. So we have a very short run of cable leading to our amplifier. So here you can see, you probably can see it all in the shot here, we have the antenna hooked up to our amplifier part one, then to our actual amplifier right up here. Now, the signal was so strong, we were able to split it off. That's how crazy this got. So we have three outputs with one input. Two of the outputs are going to this. This is from Silicon Dust. It is the HD Home Run, and it actually is two tuners connected to your network. So this is actually something that costs about 100 bucks. You can get it at the This Old Nerd store and basically allows any computer on your network to access these as its tuner over the network. This was suggested to me by the HT guys over the HD TV podcast. When you get the HD home run that comes with a CD, you gotta install some software and it works fine. Here's what happens, your media center actually sees the tuners as if it was inside the box. So you run your HD home run setup and get in for this. You have your location, set up your location. You go to your application tab and you'll see what applications are going to take advantage of your tuners. So our main application is Media Center, but there are a lot of options here beyond TV, Sage TV, Xbox Media Center, you can have whatever you want and the tuners will work with that. So that's kind of neat. Our preview application is something from HD Home Run. It allows you to quickly see the video that's coming in. If you just want to look at your signal and see if it's working, this is a good thing for that. Now you can also use something like VLC or Media Player if you want. We're using the Quick TV software that's included. Over here, you have your tuners. You can see that they're both okay. That's great. Digital antenna. Here's where you actually do your scan. So you pick your tuner, you hit scan, and here you can see all the channels we're getting. This is pretty good. We're not getting everything that's possible out of New York, but that's not bad at all. Now, let's go ahead and move over. We're not gonna mess with the advanced tab because let's leave that alone. Over here we have the HD Home Run Config screen and you can see the signal strength, signal quality, and symbol quality, whatever that is, because I don't know what that means. But if you look at our network rate, we're getting around 14 to 15 megabits per second. And now let's actually see some video, shall we? So we look at our antenna, we want to look at 2.1, which is CBS here. This is the HD Home Run Quick TV application. You can see some interlacing problems. Now this is not what you want to watch your TV on because you see the interlacing problems, but if we go to Media Center, here's Media Center, this is running Fox right now. You can see it doesn't have interlacing problems because this is a full featured application. In the background, you can hear my son who apparently wants to also be on the show. But anyway, let's talk about something interesting about over the air HD. Where I am in New York, Fox is actually having a dispute with Cablevision. 
that means that there might not be Fox channels on cable. Not our problem, we got over the air. Now son, there comes a time in, in every man's life when he's gotta learn about signal quality. Now we have an amplifier upstairs in the attic, and if you use an amplifier, you're going to have signal strength, a lot of strength. But the thing is, if you amplify noise, you're not getting actual television. Somebody told us, though, we shouldn't use an amplifier at all because you're just amplifying noise. And in our case, by the way, that wasn't the situation. When we wanted to watch Fox, we had to have the amplifier on, and that's the only way we got Fox. So, I suggest that uh, if you want to use an amplifier, test it out. Try out the gain, and if it helps you get a channel, good. But don't think that signal strength is something like signal quality. Signal quality, again, if you look at the HD Home Run, they have software that shows you signal quality. The higher that is, the better. Way more important than signal strength. While I have you here, go to the This Old Nerd site, and I want you to look at something called a tip jar. As you can see by this giant clock, this show takes some time. As you can see, I also have this boy that I stole from the supermarket. Now, because I'm on the run, I'm gonna need a lot of money. So feel free to go to the donation thing, throw us a buck. If one of you guys did that, not one of them, I guess if maybe like a tenth of you guys that watch the show, just donated like a dollar once, not a monthly thing, just once, I probably could do this for the rest of the year. So how about it folks, help me do more shows. Cause I like staying home. Cause outside's like scary. It's like people out there, man. Now, if you were paying attention, you noticed that I had a one by three splitter. Now, why do I have three outputs when my TV tuner thing, my HD home run only has two inputs? Because I got greedy. I mean, if you're gonna record lots of shows and you're getting 30 channels, why not record three of them at one time? So, we have that cable hooked up to one of our USB TV tuners. That's right, it is now time to see one of these things actually work. Let's go see that now. This is the box for the ITV1 TV tuner for DTV antennas. What does that mean? It's a tuner for Mac. Okay, here's the ITV1, the actual tuner itself. It's got a little spot for a coax and it's got a USB jack right here. They actually have smaller ones at Elgato that has little adapters and things. I like this because it's all put together. So we're just gonna attach our coax to our tuner and then we're gonna attach it to our Mac. And here we go. Here we go, we have live TV on our Mac, thanks to Elgato. Again, that's the ITV1 TV tuner, and it works great. We've installed the software that makes it a DVR, so if we wanna hit pause, we can do that. If we wanna go back, we can do that. So that's kinda of neat. Look, there's Katie Couric sitting with some guy with white hair. That's really nice. Anyway, if you want the program data for this, the first year, it's free. But every year after that, you have to pay 20 bucks because Elgato has some kind of deal with TV Guide. So even though it's not as cheap as getting something like a media center, 20 bucks is still lower cost than a cable bill or a lifetime pass to TiVo. Another quick thing is if you want, you can integrate your TV recordings into front row with something called Pi TV. And because their software is called iTV, Pi TV, you get it. What it lets you do is access your recordings. Now, I haven't had any success watching live TV with it, but I assume that's something you should be able to do. Either way, we have a way to record television right here. And something else that's kind of neat about the software, uh, the ITV software, it can automatically create iPod or iPad versions of stuff. So if you want an MP4, so you got your latest episode of Chuck, and you say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna want that in the morning. It'll make an MP4 for you. you put it in a playlist in iTunes, and you can actually sync it, and you'll get it to go. And now a quick message from our friends at Verbosities.com. I hate to break this to you, but your shirts are boring. Make a statement with your shirt. Get a verbosity. Verbosities are shirts that speak for themselves. We have quips, quotes, and other babble without all the graffiti. Plus, you can support your favorite indie with our advertisement shirts. Head on over to verbosities.com. So you may have noticed in the last episode, we didn't particularly talk about the whole partner acceptance rating too much. And there's a good reason for that, because we failed spectacularly. The last episode was pretty much the Hindenburg of this show, and I hope it'll never happen again. But since this particular attempt was so successful and this episode is so full of wind, here's the argument I suggest you pitch. You say to your partner, you know what, in these trying economic times, I think we could save some money. I saw this guy, he got rid of his cable TV, and by using some really cheap methods like an antenna, he was able to watch pretty much the same shows. He could watch The Office, Modern Family, you know, all your favorite shows. Same quality, HD, actually better quality, and the interface is not that crappy 
cable DVR thing. It's actually this very customizable thing called Media Center. It's pretty awesome. Now, you might get the question, what about all the money we'll save? Where is it going? Well, you calmly say, you know what, I thought we could use the money and go out to dinner. Maybe even buy you that patio furniture you've always wanted. Maybe that lawn gnome. Now really, look, you're saving the money. If you're missing football, by the way, and you really want to see football on Monday night, go to a sports bar. You earned it. You saved the money. Don't do it every week. But you know what? It's still cheaper than cable. Okay, we're back with our Win TV HVR 950Q from Hop Hog. The thing that I tried out a couple weeks ago that didn't succeed. Now we know this cable works, okay? We know that another USB tuner stick was able to handle this. What's gonna happen with this ThinkPad and this coax? I don't know yet. So, why is the ThinkPad closed up and covered with a bunch of junk? Well, cause this thing never actually worked. This again is the WinTV HVR 950Q from Hop Hog. And we know Windows Media Center can handle TV tuners. We saw the HD Home Run working. Weird thing is the Hop Hog actually has similar internals to the Elgato. Check that out, they have one of the same parts to it then why doesn't this work? I don't know, I don't care, I think it's a piece of junk. When you go from cable TV to over the air and these other solutions we're doing, it's called over the top. When you go to that, you're gonna miss some content. Okay, there's, there's, it's kind of unavoidable. Although it's not really unavoidable. If you're running Windows, I suggest using Amazon Unbox. If you're willing to pay for your content, Amazon Unbox is quite good for that. If you want to be on Mac, I would suggest using iTunes because it integrates into front row much better. And iTunes content that's DRM'd video doesn't play so hot on Media Center unless you get a plug-in. I didn't get to test it out because I don't think that's a good idea. I like Amazon better actually because it gives you a lot more options. What other things can you do? Netflix. Don't forget about Netflix. Not just streaming content, but actual discs. If you are totally into the time shifting like I am, and maybe you don't work in an office where there's a water cooler discussion about the latest episode of Breaking Bad, if you're willing to wait, just wait for the Blu-ray and just sit there and watch all the episodes in a row. That's what I do. I really like watching Mad Men that way. That's how I enjoy television nowadays. On top of that, we built a media server, a giant media server that has tons of content, our favorite movies, and don't forget about podcasts. Just like this one, a lot of them come out in HD, like this one. They are totally free. You can integrate them so easily into Front Row or Media Center, and there you have such a wealth of content. Oh yeah, we're gonna show you how to access Hulu Desktop nicely and neatly, unlike last time, and that means you get a ton of free cable shows, like Burn Notice. We're back at our media center. There's one more thing I wanted to throw in. We tried out the Hulu desktop integration last time, and it didn't work so well because it kept running in the background. This time, it's different. We go ahead and go to Hulu desktop. We're gonna get our nice little splash screen. We're gonna get to Hulu, because just in case we don't get all the channels, like we don't get ABC, we can still access ABC shows via Hulu. That's very loud. So let's go back to media center. So you hear the audio in the background, right? It's beautiful. Oh, it's still going. This, aha, it stopped. Here's why. We have a plugin. We're gonna have to find Chrome. It's called MC Priority 1.0. It's free. It sits in your tray. And if you're using something like Boxy or Hulu Desktop, when you press, in your case, it'll be a green button. Mine's a little Firefly button. Well, it'll kill that application. So it doesn't run in the background, you don't have to teach anything to anybody, and you can just freely give the remote away. So, we have no cable bill, other than, well, there are, there are our ISP, so we still pay them some money, but we don't have to buy TV. We have Media Center acting as their DVR. We have Hulu integration that is clean. So we don't necessarily need the DVR, but we can access whatever we want, whenever we want. Victory, my friends, is ours. We have triumphed over this ridiculous, ridiculous episode. So again, no cable TV, and we still have TV. So that's really cool. <sighs> Victory. I'm Aya Zaktar. Remember, ask yourself this, how's your tech life? And we'll see you next week. This works, it really works. Maybe you're not an idiot.